G'day folks, it's Rob here and welcome to our backyard farm. In today's clip I'm going to be answering a question I get a lot on one of our other clips. When is it the best time to pick my head of broccoli? Now these guys here are nowhere near um, being ready for harvest. They've only got tiny little bubber heads on them. But I've got a couple of plants out the front with some largest heads that I can use as a bit of an example for you folks that might help you out. I'm also going to um, just quickly cover some pointers and tips that'll help you folks out who haven't grown broccoli and want to have a crack at that as well. So you can skip ahead if you like. So uh, without any more nattering on, we'll duck out the front and I'll give you a look at this fantastic broccoli. So as you can hear, we're out the front now and this is my little broccoli patch. We've got little patches set up all around the property here. Now we have three plants. We have one plant over the back there with that nice large head on it. We have another plant, you can probably see the stem down there. We harvested that head last week. And we have this plant here we've been harvesting a fair bit of over the last couple of weeks. It's got a couple of heads that need to come off today. Now this plant over here, as you can see, the central head has already been harvested. And this is one of the side shoots. So even though this isn't the main head, it will give you some idea on what to look for when it comes time to harvest your broccoli. So with this broccoli here, what we've got is some of the little um, bud sections starting to move away from the central head itself. Uh, when the kids were younger, we used to call them little trees because it looks a bit like that from underneath. Now the optimal time to harvest your broccoli, so you get the most crunchiest head you can, is just as this starts to happen, you'll know that the head's as large as it's gonna get and you're going to have it at its crunchiest, at its peak basically. So that's when we generally lop them off. All these little tiny buds down in here, they're actually little flower buds. Now, if you leave the heads on and they continue to mature, the little florets will grow even longer and you'll end up what looks like small little broccolini shoots. From there, you'll get the odd one or two that'll bloom into flowers. Um, those flowers, by the way, are totally edible and we use them in salads all the time. In fact, heads like this that start to divide, when you cut them up small enough, they make an awesome little green salad with a couple of other veggies thrown in, some capsicums and carrots and whatnot. Another thing I like about them when they go a little bit lanky like this is you end up with um, longer stems. So something like this is ideal for the um, chicken soup that we make, just a basic little chicken and vegetable soup uh, with a couple of Asian flavorings in them. Um, we just put these raw in the bowl and then we pour the soup over the top. It tastes absolutely fantastic. As for other parts, the stem. Um, you can eat the stem all the way down to the main stem itself. You can cut it up fine, you can throw it in your stir fry, um, you can throw it in your soups, you can dice it up or shred it and pop it in salads. It's actually a very versatile plant and I do know a lot of people who will eat the leaves. We have eaten the small leaves when they're about that size, um, when they get a little bit larger, they get a little bit tough and a little bit bitter. But when they're that size, we have shredded them up and added them into salads before. So um, all in all, it's one of those plants that you pretty much will eat all of it. And there is no right and wrong when it comes to harvesting it, because even if you do let the heads bolt, you can still make something out of these loose little sections and the flowers. So I wouldn't be con too concerned at all if you don't pick your heads when they're at their peak. Just before we move on, if you haven't subscribed already, you can do so by clicking that little button down there and check the little bell icon when it appears and you'll be sent notification whenever I upload a clip here to our YouTube channel and you can come along and say good day and check out what we're doing. Now, as for growing broccoli itself, well, it does really like a fairly moderate temperature range. It's optimal range being between 16 and 24 degrees Celsius, which is roughly 60 to 75 Fahrenheit from memory. Now, for us here in um, the subtropical region of Australia, in southeast Queensland, that means we get to grow ours through autumn, winter, and then into spring as well. Sowing the seeds out is fairly easy. I grab a good quality seed raising mix or make up my own if I've got the bits and pieces on hand. Dig a little hole about six mil or quarter of an inch deep, pop in a couple of seeds, cover them back up, and then make sure the soil is kept moist, and away you go. Now in the cooler climates, it does make sense to try and get a jump start on your season by sowing them out inside or in a um, warmish greenhouse in your flats or punnets or pots or however you like to do it about uh, three to four weeks before your last frost date. That just gives you a little bit of a head start on your seedlings. And once things um, start to warm up and your last frost state's passed, you can transplant them out into the patch. Now, if you're in a warmer climate like our own, um, a good idea, I think, is to probably start them off in the same sort of um, containers, trays, punnets, flats, however you like to do it in a good quality seedling mix, probably about a month before summer ends in a nice cool shaded part of your yard. 
That way, once things start to cool down, you can then transplant your already semi-advanced seedlings out into a well-fed bed. Now, as for the bed prep itself, what I like to do is um, like to rake over about two inches or five centimeters of compost or well broken down horse or cow manure over the top of the bed. I like to pop a nice handful of quality castings or compost into the hole the plant will be placed into. The plant goes in, I firm it down nicely into the soil because I find they start off better that way. Give it a quick top dress with some more compost and away you go. As for spacing, well you've seen in this bed here, I actually do crowd them in a fair bit, uh, but generally speaking 30 to 50 centimetres or what's that, about a foot to a foot and a half apart uh, and that will give you a nice spacing between the plants because different varieties can actually grow rather large leaf wise. Now broccoli do like to be kept well hydrated so I make sure the soil is nice and moist but never sopping wet, something that's very easy to achieve in these self watering wicking beds that we like to grow in. As for fertilising, um, as long as you've started the bed off with a nice good feed, you're pretty much all right until about a month into their, um, their growing cycle. Then I like to give a little bit of a scattering of compost just around the, the roots of the plants, or if you don't have any compost on hand, um, maybe some slow released organic based fertiliser pellets will help. I also do like to give them a um, liquid feed after that every um, two to three weeks just to keep the, the plants nice and healthy while they're producing the main head and then after that the side shoots. Now time to harvest will vary between varieties and also your climatic conditions. My favourite is Calabrese and it generally tends to give us the main head um, anywhere up to about uh, two to three months we start to see the nice head form and then after that's harvested like you saw we get side shoot after side shoot but it will depend on your variety I've seen some that will mature faster than that um, 75 days at the longest and others that will take anywhere up to 120 so there's a bit of a look at when it's the best time to pick your broccoli if you wanted it as peak crunchiness and for you folks who haven't had a crack at growing broccoli before those tips will come in handy it is a very easy plant to grow and you know if you follow the easy steps you'll end up with some luscious productive green ladies like these girls behind me also too a quick g'day and thanks to the marvelous folks over on patreon who are helping to support our youtube channel you can actually check out the super contributors facebook pages and website links in the description down below i do hope everyone's gardens are booming and aquaponic systems too if you've got one on the go and i will catch you wonderful folks next clip cheers all have a top one